Welcome to another episode of Gymnasticsville. I'm your host, Midnight Robin. We in the bird's nest in Las Vegas. It's going to be a great show. We have Antonio here. How you doing, Antonio? I'm good. How's it going, everybody? Doing good, doing good. And we have the action figure. Carrie Adderley, what's up? What's up? We're here. Vegas, baby. Let's roll. All right. So first thing we're going to talk about, you know, is circus... Olay taking over. Circus Olay buys B Star Entertainment to expand into children's shows. Okay. V Star produces children's stage shows such as Sesame Street Live, Bubble Guppies Live, Dragon Tales. Okay. They also bought Cirque Dreams. I mean, with this latest acquisition, guys, uh, is Cirque taken over and what do you think of these new business deals uh, with Circus Soleil? I mean in my perspective I, it's a huge move and it's, I, it's positive for them because it, it's business instead of trying to treat it like a family it's going to help them to grow outside their comfort zone which is what they need at this point. Yeah I, I, I agree um, I'm glad that they're uh, making these types of moves um, it's going to help expand uh, more artists and more performers to open their eyes to these other avenues um, and being able to work at these types of shows that otherwise they would not, never even try or think of to to work for so hopefully you know Cirque will take this uh, and use their casting abilities uh, you know and use them to, to expand more versus just kind of I feel like sometimes they would just kind of pigeonhole people in a certain direction versus, you know, really being able to see this one performer and so and know that they can do, you know, many other things versus just this one thing that they they want them for and knowing that they have a asset that they can utilize in multiple things. So um, it's it's really cool to see that they're expanding um, and, and taking it to uh, the next level. So. When I think about this, and correct me if I'm wrong, you know, Cirque du Soleil, you know, a large part of their employees and casting are people in the acrobatics community, gymnastics, all that. So, is this good for gymnasts and acrobats? Then, you know, or is this, I mean, these shows aren't really that acrobatic. So, I mean, is this good for us or is this bad for us? I what mean, do you think? I'm hoping that it's going to help create more jobs for all of the gymnasts coming out of school, all of the young acrobatics, you know, even the kids now that are trying to perform break dancing and everything to get more into that entertainment feel just because, I mean, it's for that younger crowd now. So them branching out helps to build that smaller community to build something even taller than that. Yeah, I think it's good for the gymnast community because every show has acrobatics. I mean, in this article, the uh, uh, Daniel Lemaire for Cirque du Soleil says that this is entering into a space that's com that's new for them. Cirque generally in all their shows is not technically kid friendly. Um, even in the shows they have children performers in, like the Beatles Love, uh, they're you know it's still Beatles and it's still a different Generation. feel to the music yeah. right it's 60s you know 60s 70s I mean even up until now um, uh, and it's about the Beatles love you know and not uh, a children's theme exactly and so I think uh, having this children's theme it's gonna help because a lot of gymnasts look younger oh yeah you know you gotta think a lot of people don't think about that part a lot of gymnasts look younger. Even when they get older, they can appear well. to be, yeah, they age well, so they can appear to be a lot younger than they actually are. So that helps the show. And then, you know, I'm sure if I'm looking at this Paw Patrol video, and if they were casted with a, a, a talented group of people that had even acrobatic ability, that makes those characters that much better. And actually, I watch Paw Patrol because I have a daughter. And I've watched a lot of Paw Patrol. <laughs> and they do a lot of acrobatics. That's right. So I'm guessing in the show now, there's not a lot of acrobatics of the, of the puppets. So by having gymnasts or, 
you know, acrobats, uh, per acrobatic performers that can cross over, that can sing, that can act, um, that, that are familiar with theater, which a lot of former gymnasts turned circ artists are, that would be easy, very easy, you know, hopefully lucrative thing for them. Right. So we, we see over the last decade, you know, I've seen it a lot ever since, you know, Cirque du Soleil has been huge. You know, a, there have been a lot of other companies and shows that have sprung from the Cirque idea. And they've all been different, but they've used that Cirque in the beginning, right? Um, not the same as Cirque. You know, Cirque obviously has a, has, a, has a high quality in all their shows and productions, but... I mean, what are your thoughts on that now that Cirque seems to be trying to to gain that Cirque back? You know, yeah, it's kind of like you said, you know, a lot of people try to branch off from that whole Cirque thing and that Cirque name itself and create their own things, but it's still Cirque. So it still originates from that same origin. origin. Um, as far as what it is now, it just looks like Cirque is trying to come in and take back what's theirs. You know? Yeah, you know, I mean... I think it's. I mean, right? Because think about Sir Dreams. We see. We've all watched. I've, I saw Sir hey, Dreams. Hey, we casted. We for Sir Dreams. Yes. We cast it for Sir Dreams, and so we've worked with uh, a lot of their people, and you know we've helped guys that were not great performers into becoming great performers. Yeah, but I want to. But I want to get Dreams. back to that Sir Dream show because for me, when I saw that they 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 bought Sir Dreams, it makes sense because I saw Sir Dreams, and I'm like. Yo, this it's looks a lot thing. like Circus Soleil, like you know, a lot, yeah. a lot of it, like the whole Circus concept. Soleil, <laughs> it's, 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 right? Exactly. No, I mean, it's, it's just, Cirque it's just, Soleil. yeah, Cirque, whatever you want to say. I don't even want to say it. I can't pronounce it right. I gotta work on it. All right, you just say Circus Soleil. I'm just saying that. It's well, about it's day, about dang time. That's but, all I'm saying. But because remember, there's been so many companies that's been using Cirque, and literally the costuming is very similar. The artwork on the face, everything, yeah, everything is very similar. So it's, yeah, for but, me it's like finally Cirque, you're finally taking over what's kind of yours because everyone's been doing a knockoff of Cirque now for a while. Well, remember and, and making a lot of money from it. Well, yeah, oh, yeah. The Cirque, a lot of money. Cirque, Cirque, Dreams, Cirque you know. Circus Productions down in Florida. They, I remember we Cirque researched Dreams. it. Yeah. But the company's called Circus Productions. Yes, but the show so the that they're selling Cirque is Cirque, Cirque Dreams. Dreams. Exactly. Right, yeah. you know, and so I remember when we were Dreaming casting for them, uh -huh. and, we, and we started, yes. <laughs> we were casting for them, and we started putting, uh, learning about them, we saw that there was a lawsuit. There was a lawsuit in the 90s or early 2000s from Cirque, Cirque du Soleil. To Cirque Is that James. Do you pronounce it Cirque Dude. Do you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but there was a lawsuit, and Cirque Dreams won the lawsuit. So that's why they were able to continue doing Cirque Dreams for yeah. this this whole time. Uh -huh. And now, that Cirque made the right move. They should have did this years ago. Yeah. Well, Cirque made. I would say Cirque Dreams, the owner of that, made the right move. Made the right move because you know Cirque Dreams kind of lost some of its flavor over the last few years. I mean, did it have flavor in the first place? <laughs> yo, it had. Yeah. Yo, it, was it had some of Cirque. Yeah, it had yeah. some of Cirque's flavor. Like so all it had. Was, so it did have some. Yeah, it know? had Cirque's flavor. They had, you know what? They had a really good contortion act. These two twins that were. Yeah, but that's. Out of the whole show, that's the only thing you remember. Yeah, that's the only thing. <laughs> no, well, they had nice costumes. But think about they had a lot but nice that, costumes. that originated from with Cirque du Soleil. Exactly. Yeah. So that's what I mean. I can't and remember that act, that, that, act, right? that act is at Zumanity. That yeah. same act? Well, they are OGs, like the Mongolian girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. And they were exactly. probably a Mongolian girl. Yeah, they're definitely from Mongolia. Uh -huh. for sure. yeah. Yeah. So it, 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 the OGs <laughs> are still doing it at Cirque du Soleil. Or maybe, I mean, obviously they kind of have more the same... People After come a in, flavor yeah. to it, but, but still, when Zoo started, actually, That's no, crazy. it was in LA. You know, it, I was like, wondering because the when, I, when I There's saw them as humanity, shows. I was like, you know, it's like the ones that were from Cirque Dreams. Uh huh. Okay. Absolutely, yeah. Cirque Dreams just, you know, they were able to capitalize on this loophole for yeah. a few decades, but I, I was just surprised. Instead of a lawsuit, I'm surprised Cirque being so big when they got big enough just to outright say, "Hey, we're buying you guys," because we don't. Well, they obviously did. They, they finally did, but I mean. But hey, I mean, actually, probably a good time to do it. It's with how the production market's happening, it's probably not like you said. It's what, what you still gotta understand is though, you know, the origination of Cirque was based around that family, that whole orientation, 
of trying to be holding homely to everybody. So, yeah. you know, they played favoritism and they didn't try to step on anybody as they became big. Gotcha. But now that it's becoming way more corporate, there's more partners involved in yeah. it. Yeah, they're it's like, yo, like, put the money yeah, in the bank. It's all branding. It's yeah. like, yo, That's all it. these cert. Yeah, they got the these, money in the bank to buy these shows. Just buy them out. Yeah, right all right these cert companies you know. are, yeah, they, they, make, they can make enough to buy out all these shows in one night from each show. Exactly. I mean, there's really only a handful of productions that I, are like I, that. I feel like right now, like Cirque right now, in my mind, it's kind of taking a page from Disney and the acquisitions that they're doing. I well, mean, I hope so. Yeah. Like, just if you just look at what a blueprint that Disney's laid out and what Disney did to them, Disney absorbed them right away. Like, yep. right away when Cirque started, what, early 90s, they had put Lanuba in right away. Disney wasn't waiting. They were like, oh, no. look at this brand new company that yeah. just started yeah. that has its own thing. Let's... Let's crack the door open for them and see what happens. Yeah, and it. now look what's happening. They got that show out now after all these years and putting in a brand new Disney style show. On but it's property. a Cirque show. Still Cirque. Still Cirque. Well, Cirque's no. I mean, I don't even think it's gonna be. It's not gonna be Cirque show. This is gonna be a Disney show that's produced by Cirque du Soleil. Yeah. It's gonna be Disney characters. It's gonna be Disney. With a, but a Cirque hint of Cirque. Yeah, running seven days a week. Yeah, wow. But you know, just like what, just like what V Star is doing with Cirque too. V Star, they're not going any, they're not going anywhere. They're still running the same operation, just now Cirque's bought into it. So yeah. I feel like, you know, it's good that Cirque's doing this. And actually, with some of those like Cirque Dreams, they can just discontinue that stuff and then take over that market. Take over, like you said, we were saying that earlier. Take over all those contacts that they've had there and. That they've been lucrative in. I mean, they've been up there in New York doing stuff. Yeah, it's going to open up a lot of windows for Cirque themselves and all the other companies, I mean, that are attached to it. You think they're going to have more acrobatics? It's like V-Star, you think they're going to have more acrobatics on some of that, their Sesame Live and some of their Paw Patrol Live? Or... If Cirque yeah. has anything to do with it, oh, yes. And action sports, because you got to remember, Cirque's in action sports now. Yeah. So they'll have inline skaters and BMXers and, you know... You know they got the new show yeah. opening here that's going to uh, go into the Luxor called Jump. It's just BMX, just stunt show, which is, again, going to provide more jobs for the stunt guys, the acrobats, the gymnasts, yeah. but it's stunts. Basically a show that they're hiring acrobats and stuntmen that are not stuntmen because they can't afford stuntmen yeah. to come in and do those crazy shit. Yeah. Good and bad <laughs> in that aspect because... Yes. Good because it's good for work, but bad because if they don't put the right quality people in there, those guys are setting themselves up. Exactly. So, and when a big corporation doesn't care because you're just a number to them, they're going to get a new person. Once you're broken, they're bringing in the next person. Pull so them off the assembly line. Yep. So it's, it's all those. So we're not too far from California, guys. And, you know, we always talk about basketball. So we got to at least touch on this. LeBron James to the Lakers. I want to get you all thoughts on that. I'm a big Lakers fan, Kobe Bryant fan, and yo, know, I don't really know how I feel about it. I mean, but we can get into that later. Uh, but I feel like in Vegas, y'all, y'all correct me if I'm wrong, but there are a lot of LA fans in Vegas since Vegas doesn't yeah. have a basketball team. So. Tons of Lakers yeah. fans, exactly. So what what was the buzz here in Vegas, Antonio, about LA and LeBron? I mean, a lot of people were kind of disappointed because a lot of people don't like LeBron. I'm on the opposite side of the fence. I don't like the Lakers. Well, is that like you LeBron. think a lot of people right. like here on the, on, the, you know, on the West Coast don't like LeBron? I mean, LeBron has a lot of fans. Well, the reason that there's a lot of Lakers fans in Vegas because there's a lot of native Californians that move to Las Vegas from LA exactly. because of the cost of living. Yeah. yeah, you know what I mean. So that's I mean millions of I'm sure there's been already millions of people that have, from decades have moved from California to Las Vegas just for that reason. Gotcha. And there you go. Ensues the LA fandom but um but yeah you know LeBron is LeBron he's the king of the league and whatever he does everybody else follows suit it's like a you know it's just like Game of Thrones yes. <laughs> that's why I love that <laughs> uh, on Bleacher Report I love that Game of Game of Zones <laughs> so but yeah I mean it's LeBron man and it's gonna be just more. It's already more exciting. It's already more exciting. The basketball season just ended, and it got more exciting yes. already. You know, Adam Silver, they know what they're doing. Um, yeah. In, in, in my head, I see like every movie has a villain, and for the West Coast, LeBron has always been the villain coming towards the playoffs. So now that he becomes part of the team. 
he can't really be the villain anymore for the West Coast. Exactly. So I think some people are... Yeah, he's like the... Da- well, no, he's the David and the David and Goliath now. Because yes. obviously, you got a good thing with L.A. coming in a new young team. Oh, yeah. Now you're bringing, a, a, like, your, your best soldier onto this young core, right? And then the Goliath is clearly Golden State. And you got Kev- KD, who everybody hates now. So it's kind of... Sw- you know, that tie to switch. People, I mean, there's people that don't like LeBron, but they don't hate him. Like, they, people yes. just don't, you know, KD's kind of assume that. But for me, personally, I, I like KD. He he does what's best for him. He likes California. Hey, do your thing. That's but right. a lot of people uh, in Oklahoma now and in Texas <laughs> and those areas – feel like he's an unloyal person and all this. So that, that all makes that all matters when LeBron is dubbed unloyal, but then he becomes loyal by going back home and then wins the championship for the team. He did them a service. He didn't have to go back to Cleveland. Uh-huh. And then now now that he left this time, it's like they're throwing him roses on the way out. <laughs> like, we love you, you know, it's like a big parade on the yes. way out as he like triumphs all the way to LA. Exactly. So exactly you know and so now, like you said, yeah, he's in this new role of like savior almost, and now he's he's quest with taking this dynasty team to now go dethrone the new West Coast dynasty. I mean, that's that's the whole parody. It's like Lakers have always been the dynasty in the West. Uh huh. Now there's a new dynasty in the Northwest, and who better than to dethrone them than the Lakers? That's right. You know, Houston can't do it. OKC okay, so can't do it. Clippers couldn't do it. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. Um, San Antonio can't do it now. You know, it's it's the Golden State Warriors. Like it, when you really look at it, even though it's LeBron's league, it's still a Golden State Warriors league. Like they're the champs. Yeah. yeah. And they've went to what four straight, won three out of four finals. Uh huh. And see, now they have to duke it out even to get to the finals. Yeah, well, means- no. and that's what I was, we were kind of talking about a little earlier. Now LeBron has a ch- It's all these pieces. It's not just that the move, because it wasn't about the money. No, LeBron no, no, could have no. stayed in Cleveland, made a boatload of more money. He could, he's going to still make a boatload of money, yeah. right? But it's about Luke Walton, who used to be a coach for Golden State. He knows their system, so he might know some weaknesses that LeBron can use against it. Uh-huh. Um, and yeah, I mean, that's really it. Luke Walton understanding Kerr and being able to hopefully chess match that. And then you got the ultimate, uh, you know, playmaker and champion in LeBron to carry it out, you know, and then now you're bringing in these other playmakers. You already got a nice young team. I mean, people forget they got this guy named, uh, Ingram. Yes. Who is basically like KD. And he's basically like KD. Seven foot tall, can do everything. If that kid keeps developing his game, he's unstoppable. And then also they got a new rookie named Kyle Kuzma. He is unstoppable too. These two dudes, those two dudes alone actually were carrying the Lakers last year. Uh huh. Kuzma as a rookie was carrying the Lakers. So now you got those two plus LeBron plus Lonzo Ball. Lance so, Stevenson. So here's the big question. The big question is this. JaVale, JaVale McGee. Because his agent came out and said, you know, because a lot of people were wondering why LeBron made this decision. And, you know, he came on, actually Summer League, he was in Vegas a few days ago and said it was purely a basketball decision. So of all the teams that LeBron could have picked, you're telling me L.A. was the one team that he had the best shot of winning a championship in the next three, four years? Yes. But that whole Luke Walton is that, thing is, is why. Is that what you huh? think? Is that what you think? Because yeah. he, LeBron knows. He knows he could beat everybody in the East. Well, I'm saying though, like so he's got to conquer the West. And once he does that, yeah. you think he has a better shot winning a championship, beating the Golden State with the Lakers than? Well, you got to play Golden. You got to play Sixers, Golden State at some point, right? Yeah. yeah. You got to play Golden State at some point. Sixers have never played Golden State in the finals as many times as LeBron. Okay, LeBron needs an end. It's a basketball decision. So, like I said, it's his chess. LeBron's willing to sacrifice a lot of things in order to get the win. Sometimes in a game of chess, you can win with your king. 
So that's how I'm looking at it. And now by having Luke Walton, I'm telling you, Luke Walton is going to give him the information he needs when he's playing real time. And that's it. Because look how close he's been. Oh, yeah. Like, even this even this year, I feel like if what kind of – I don't know what kind of occurrence that was with the whole J.R. Smith play. Oh, man. But for that to happen, when LeBron literally wheeled his team, like, he put them in the position to win, and then it fell apart, not because of LeBron. Like, like if LeBron would have been able to – you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like he, he that he he could have possibly even beat them with that bad team this year exactly. by just getting that one win. That changes a lot in that a playoff. Whole momentum right away. So you know, I think that's what I was saying. I've been saying it. Luke Walton is the key because he understands Golden State's scheme and how they run their plays, the ins and outs of their their execution. Uh huh. And now you got LeBron. Now he's gonna get the information. That's like, you know, last season I referred to the Cavs as a sleepy team. LeBron always played ball, and he had to find out when he got there whether his team was going to play with him or not. Yeah. So now he's going to the Lakers where we got these kids that want to run, run. So now he knows every time he comes up court, he's got a team coming with him. Oh, yeah. Now he can actually yeah. play ball. Or they're already exactly. they're already down the court. Exactly. You got these young Look at Lonzo coming Ball. up the court. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Lonzo they, Ball is yeah. Lakers play fast. They, they exactly. play a fast paced game. So. Which is how LeBron plays while the rest of his, his team is still back there on yeah, defense. His team wasn't playing <laughs> fast last year. Oh man. That was horrible. So it gives LeBron actually a lot of chance to do a little not do less, but he can save a lot. He can serve a lot of more energy when you got young guns, you know. Yes, so he can play as a player instead of just playing for himself. <laughs> All right, so what year? What year does he win a championship then? Or if? Year one, I'll two, say or three? Going right away. You think right away? Right, right you away. think this year? Right away. Right away, without them getting anyone else. Well, they got JaVel McGee, who just was with them. So yep. that's going to be a huge defensive yeah, yes. piece for them. He might even be their starting center. There you go, right there. Those are your so, blocks right there. You mean, you got the coach that helped them get to the championship mm-hmm. or helped them become a dynasty, and now you got. JaVel, JaVel McGee, who just won two championships with him and was a big defensive piece of their puzzle for the Warriors. So, you know, I think that's enough ammunition. And then you what got year? Great What year? The question was what year, Cam? I'm going to say year? the second. Second year. My money says right away. Right away. They're going <laughs> right to win away. this year. That's it. Because yeah, the Warriors have disassembled well, here's, a little here's bit. Here's the thing that's going to happen. The Lakers are going to play Golden State more. Oh, so yes. LeBron didn't face Golden State. He only faced him two times a year. Yep. Then he plays. I feel like when you play a team more and more, yep. it's more of like of a psychological. Yeah. You you get you understand them. You learn their ways. More, you learn their ways. And LeBron used to own you know, KD all the you know, time. Well, here's the thing. I think he used to own him. I think a, a big big pickup. No one's talking about. People talk about is Lance Stevenson. I think he's gonna annoy the crap out of Golden State. Yeah. yeah. Lance Especially Stevens, playing him that he's many gonna times. Blow yeah. It's going to be great. He's going to get. He's probably going to get Draymond Green kicked out of the game. I can yeah. see him getting Draymond Green getting kicked out of at least one of these we'll games. Play that ain't hard. <laughs> <laughs> that but ain't that's hard that's a great reason to pay Lance Stevenson. Yeah. That's a great reason because hey, that one game had that happened to. I mean, that did well, kind of happen. Did happen to Cleveland. Lost and the chip. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and that's Draymond the year Green was suspended. Exactly. There you go. So you know. And he, like you said, you brought up uh, LeBron's agent. Um, he was saying, uh, it was another article, him talking about Lance and him being like the worm. You know, him being like this and Dennis. He was like the Dennis Rodman for the Bulls. Yeah. You know, so it's like, it. yeah, you do need a guy like that. Little, that's just, somebody's a little crazy. Yeah, that's <laughs> worm. You know, psychological. That's, that's, court, why, you know? that's why I love Dennis Rodman, man. He was just like, he was just always able to just worm his way <laughs> into anybody's poking, head. Poking. Anybody's head in the game. And then next thing you know, he had like 30 rebounds, no points, and they won the game. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Oh man, I love Robin. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to this Robin. Yes. we actually got a chance to hang out with him backstage at Mystere. A few times. <laughs> yeah. Party hard, Dennis Robin. <laughs> that guy parties. <laughs> the worm. Yeah. But yeah, LeBron. I, second year. I, the only reason I say second year, Golden State still got four of the best scorers mm-hmm. in the world. Uh, and and yeah. My thoughts is everyone's thinking that that's what's going to happen, and it's going to be a surprising upset. Cousins, early, man. They got cousins. Early. 
Oh yeah, that's what I was about to say. Yeah. And they got, they got cousins. You so think about it. They got year. five mm-hmm. all. They got six all stars essentially. Mm-hmm. Andre Iguodala, cousins, Clay, Steph, Durant. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Those guys could play the first half. They could play a whole quarter. Let the reserves play the second quarter. Play the third. You know, they could, easily, easily. Those guys are gonna dominate. So. Yeah, man. It's going to be a very interesting next season. But, yeah, that's why I say the second year. I say the second year. Give him, a, give, him give LeBron a year to jail with those young guys. A little warm-up year. Yeah. <laughs> and, or, you know, go to the Western Conference, you know, face him in the Western Conference Finals. Uh, but, you know, you never know what happens in the playoffs. Maybe they face him, you know, when do they face him in the Western Conference Finals, in the semifinals. Yeah. You know, that matters when the team's a little hurt, beat up, trying to rest up for the finals. Yes. So, you know, it's all about health at the end of the year. Qualifier, U.S. qualifier for the men's carry. It's coming up. It's this weekend, Saturday, Sunday, July 14th, 15th. A lot of people competing. I mean, this is the beginning of the, you know, national team births, you know, for the senior level. And this is also the beginning of an essentially somewhat of a qualification process for world team, right? So we know right from the get go the big the big hitters aren't competing in this competition because if you already are on national team, the senior national team, you are automatically qualified into US championships and that's what this is about. This is a qualifier for US championships. Sam's not competing, Kimball's not competing, Bauer's not competing, Ewell's not competing. Um, well, we know Ewell and Bauer's not competing. You know, press release by USA Gymnastics says Sam is competing. But, I mean, what are the chances that Sam does all around, do you think, Carrie? I mean, are there, is there any... I mean, I, you know, usually, you know, in the past experiences of qualifier with the top guys on the national team... They usually compete a few events, but not really do the all-around. Unless Sam's just, just trying to come out like, you know, like a baller and be like, yo, I'm ready. They say nothing but a chicken wing. But what do you think the chances are that Sam competes all-around? Very slim as well. I don't think he's going to compete all-around. You know, uh, it's good. I mean, it's good for them to put that in there. But, uh, yeah, and that's great. I mean, as they should. Yeah, he's competing. Even if he does one event, I kind of – I hope he competes floor because I want to see if he puts in that new pass. That, Ooh, two and know, a half, double full, double front. Exactly. You know, like that. Well, that's yeah, gonna be, he's I want to see it that. It so seems like in practice that. he's been boning that. And, yeah, maybe if he just wants to see how see that would like. feel in competition. I mean, that's, that, that's a big pass. I mean, it's that's a, a pass, pass to where. You got to be sure you're going to do that Anywhere pass. you go, you're going to get some oohs and ahs because. You have to be sure you're going to do that pass. Back two and a half. Punch front double full. Punch double front. I tell you one thing. You have thing. to be very sure. Kenzo from Japan is obviously by far the best gymnast in the world. But I think even Kenzo may actually get up. Kenzo, you and think look, Kenzo's no, better than... No, I'm just saying Kenzo may actually watch him do that He's the best four in the world, yes. Yeah, Kenzo's the best time in the world right now. And yeah. it's not even close. Right. So, I mean, but that's a pass that Kenzo may actually get up and be like, yo, let's see what Sam's busting over there. <laughs> he may, because right now, yeah. you know, Kenzo, no one's really breaking a sweat with Kenzo. I mean, he's not breaking a sweat. I mean, there's been people that's tried to do his type of difficulty. Uh, this one guy from Australia. There's a few guys that try it, but they can't really stay in bounds. I mean, they got the power, but Kenzo has the power, obviously, How does he and even do the it? control. He just goes from like corner to corner to corner. He just yeah, doesn't. Even he's stop. like a top. But yeah, so anyway, yeah, yeah. Sam's not gonna compete all around. Uh, I'm not even sure if Ma- Marvin Kimball's making the trip. You know, he's not even going. You know, Alan Bauer's right. not going. Yule's mm-hmm. not going. So yeah, this really is for the guys. Basically, if you're not our national team. Then you need to go here and qualify in. Um, one other qualifier for U.S. qualifier is the NCAA championship, so that's why from Oklahoma, there's they have a few guys, you know, from right. that circuit that's already in. Levi, I think Levi got top five in the all rounds, so he's in. Well, a lot of people are gonna get in because you know, 
a 71 man field to everybody else doesn't seem like that's a big number. Well, here's the thing. That's also split up between juniors and seniors. Right. That's what I'm saying. That's what so. I'm, exactly. So out of seven out of but and in addition to that for the juniors, is it, to juniors it's usually it's usually the top six make it. So I just, I'm just letting you know. Okay, but we're talking about the seniors right now. Right, the okay. seniors Let's right talk now. Talk about that, but who do you well, think? No, no, no. This is still USA Championships. You know, this is still this is I'm, US qualifier right now. I'm, we're, we're, we're talking about US qualifier, right? But we're preparing for USA Championships. What I'm trying to say is, out of the 71 man roster, I believe what I was told that about 40 of those people are going. So over half of the field. Are gonna be able to go to USA? Yeah, but most of that is coming from the senior lineup because on the juniors, I, I think, know we're just I think thinking it's like about top it. Top six or top eight make it, so that that gives you a sixteen out of that forty. Yeah, but you have to give so there's about listeners. twenty spots. So there's about twenty spots on the senior level. Right, but you but you also have to give yeah, and then another twenty spots for the junior level, ish. You no. know, I think they're gonna expand the junior team. Yeah, we don't know. Well, we don't know what they're I don't know. Now. I'm gonna speak for myself. Yeah. I don't know yeah. right now. I'm going off the top with this. So I can't get, but I'm just saying, in years past, they've always given an opportunity for more seniors to go than no, juniors. Yeah. You know, yeah. usually for qualifier, you know, they have the guys that qualify from J.O. Nationals. Well, yeah, only the top already. juniors make it because there's are the top juniors that are better than some of these seniors. You know, there's top juniors that are already better than some of the seniors. No, they're competing in different divisions is what I'm saying. Okay, gotcha. so out of the junior divisions, oh, okay. okay, they're going to pick – Top six to eight in, in, in you know in each age group. That's yeah, that's usually how it works. Okay. But right now we're gonna still talk about the seniors. Um who do you think has a good shot to win this? I mean, there's a few guys that currently right now are not on national team for whatever reason, and they need to do well to qualify. Colin Van Wicklin is someone that needs to do well. You know, He's in Con- the mix. Kanji's in the mix. Kanji's in uh, the mix. Donovan Bailey. Tanner you know. Justice is in the mix. Tanner, you know. Um, so, yeah. there's, there's a few guys that are out there. I mean, when, when you look at the U.S. qualifier, I mean, who is your favorite to win this meet? I need to, I need to see the... the Guys that are doing all around first, first, you know. I want to know the lineup. Well, we dude, yeah, we gotta make it. Yeah, you know, this this is the day well, before good. qualifying. Well, if I can obviously with my kind of own bias, I can name like that you know handful of people I I know that I'm closer to, but also want to be able to say, all right, you know, if I knew the whole lineup of all that top, you know, I can say, all right, who are the top ten guys right now? On the top of my head. Because the top 10 guys aren't all going to be there. So these are a bunch of others, you know, a bunch of other guys as well, fine for a spot. So, But my gut intuition tells me, you know, I feel like Colin Van Winkle has a good shot to to win this thing. You know, I think he's prepared. He's been preparing very hard. And, um, you know, I think he's kind of in that mode of trusting the process and opportunities are coming for him. So, you know. I think, um, you know, he's hot right now. So I think uh, hopefully he'll come out with the dub, man, and we'll see what happens. Yeah, I mean, I think I think we mentioned, you know, I like Donovan Bailey. I mean, he has good gymnastics. We'll see if this meet he can hit six for six because he has clean clean lines, and then, you know, he can't count out Kanji. So I think those are definitely the guys to look out for. It looks like Danielle Wittenberg is going to be competing. He's prior to I can do all around. He's already on the national team, uh, even though he's been hurt the whole year recovering. I want to. See, well, I'm wondering what events he's going to do. I mean, if It'd I was great him, if he, he should try he, to do you know, all he, six. He's, he's, he may. He, he should may, try to do all he six. He may do all six. He, he may. needs to because then why would you try to just save until you know his next competition? You need to see how you can do. Yeah, all you got to get before, see, yeah, see what that. it feels yeah, like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, gotta see yeah. what it feels like. So I mean, you can do all the one on sixes and two on sixes as you want, but until you're on the competition floor going through it, you know, you gotta you gotta see what it feels like. You know, it just depends on his health too. I don't know how healthy is he. That's another question mark too. That's gonna be a question. How mark. healthy is yeah, he? Yeah. So we're definitely gonna have, you know, we're gonna Radar talk there. about talk about this a little bit after this week. I'm looking forward to Monday's podcast when we kind of break down qualifier because I'm very intrigued. I think. You know, there's always someone, you know, I just feel that qualifier is a good meet to win. If you can do all around that meet and you can win qualifier, I think that definitely helps you going into 
U.S. championships. I think it's a mark that tells all the guys that he can beat a qualifier that you're ready to go. So, yeah, that's my thoughts on that. Yeah, we'll see. It's going to be – hopefully it'll be some really good gymnastics. Hopefully everybody will be safe and, you know, you know, staying – within their limits and not over doing their limits to and cause them any type of injury or anything like that, you know. So good luck to all the competitors. Uh yeah, tear it up. Yeah, and I'm I'm actually looking at it, you know, I think at this point I like to know when it's all said and done, who's gonna what program in the country is gonna have the most qualifiers. I think that's something also to look into because that also means that that program is, is, is doing its thing. So I know Cypress has some guys out there. They're probably going to have some guys that qualify. Yep. Um, OTC, they got a bunch of guys training there. Oklahoma, Penn State, Ohio State, they got some guys going to qualify too. So this is going to be interesting to see kind of what program um, is still feeling it from, you know, layover from the NCAAs. Yep. Yep. All right. Jamassicsville. Have a great weekend. We gonna catch y'all back next week. Yeah. I'm Midnight Robin signing off. Voice of Acrobatics. Acrobatics, rather singing. You have the practice for the challenge you're bringing on yourself. Cause believe me, it's hard when your mind gives up. You gotta speak.